Sometimes in a real world application, we might want to redirect a user to another URL when he has typed some other URL which no longer exists. Let's understand this with a business scenario. Let's say you're creating an e-commerce application and initially you're only selling books from your e-commerce website. And at that time, you created an action method to show all the books to the user, something like this. So here we have this books action method and for that we are defining the route as slash books. So whenever the user types slash books in the address bar of the browser, we are going to execute this books action method and we are going to display all the books to the user which we are selling from our e-commerce website. But over the time, your e-commerce business has grown and now you are selling other products also like mobiles, laptops, etc. For that, for each category, you have created a separate action method as shown here. So for example, for mobiles, you are creating an action method and for that you have defined the route as slash category slash mobiles. Then for laptops, we are creating this action method laptops and for that we are defining the route as slash category slash laptops. So in the address bar, when the user types root URL slash category slash mobiles, we are going to display all the mobiles which we are selling from our e-commerce application. In the same way, if he types root URL slash category slash laptops, then we are going to display all the laptops which we are selling from our e-commerce website. And since we are categorizing our products now, we are displaying products based on the category. What we have done is we have created a new action method and for that we have specified the route as slash category slash books. So now when the user wants to buy a book from our e-commerce website, he has to type this URL slash category slash books in the address bar. And then from this books action method, we are going to show all the books which we are selling from our e-commerce website. But let's say there are some old customers who are using our e-commerce app from beginning and they have bookmarked the old URL for books. So this is the old URL. So let's say some of the customers have already bookmarked this URL and whenever they want to buy a new book from our e-commerce application, they will simply go ahead and click on that bookmark and they will come to this URL. Now for us as an application owner, the problem is the URL has changed and the old customers are not aware about the new URL for buying the books. In that case, the solution will be to keep the old URL, the old action method and whenever a user makes a request to the old URL, we will simply redirect them to the new URL. Okay, so for example, if the user types root URL slash books in the address bar, it will automatically redirect the user to root URL slash categories slash books. And to achieve this, we can use another action result provided by ASP.NET Co. And that is redirect to action result. Let's see how we can achieve this with an example. So here, currently I am in the book controller and there we have this action method called book. And for this, the route is slash books. Now let's say this is the old URL. And now we have created a new action method. For that, let me go ahead and let me create a new controller. Again, I will select this MVC controller empty template. Let's click on this add button. And here, let's call this controller as maybe store controller. Let's click on this add button. So here, our store controller has been created. In here, I am going to create a new action method and I will simply call it as books. For this action method, let's specify a route. And let's say the route is slash category slash books. And from here, let's simply go ahead and let's return content result. And here, let's say, let's simply say books page. Okay, and let's specify the content type as text slash plain. Okay, I just want to keep things simple here. Now, the thing is, Whenever a user types this URL, root URL slash books in the address bar, we want to redirect the user to this URL, slash category slash books. So for that, let me simply go ahead and let me comment all these checks. We don't need it for now. Okay, so basically, whenever the user has typed root URL slash books in the address bar, we want to redirect the user to this action method to this books action method which we have inside this store controller for that what we can do is we can return a new instance of redirect to action result ok 
Okay, now what this redirect to action result does is it redirects a user to a given action method. In our case, the action method name is books. So we need to specify that action method name. That is the first argument to this constructor, to this redirect to action constructor. Then we also need to specify the controller name. So in our case, the controller name is store controller. Now, when we specify the controller name, we don't prefix this controller. Here, the controller name is store controller. So we simply need to pass store here. We don't need to include controller when we are passing the controller name. Keep this point in mind. Then the third argument is the list of route parameter values which you want to send. Here, I will simply pass null. Or what we can also do is we can pass an anonymous object by using new and then a set of curly braces like this. And in here, we can specify any route parameter value. So here, we are basically creating an instance of redirect to action result using this new keyword. And then we are returning that instance from this action method. And instead of creating a new instance of this redirect to action result and then returning it, what we can do is we can also use an inbuilt method called redirect to action. Behind the scenes, this redirect to action method, it is going to return a new instance of redirect to action result. And again, this method is provided by this base controller class. So now what will happen is whenever a user will make a request to this slash books URL, it will be automatically redirected to slash category slash books. And you can see this URL in the address bar. Let me actually show you that. So let's run this application. And here in the address bar, let me type root URL slash books. And if I press enter, you see in the URL, the address has changed to slash category slash books. And the page has been redirected. And here you can see books page. Now let me show you what is actually happening here. So let me go ahead and let me open the network tab here. And let's make a request again. So here I will say root URL slash books. And if I press enter, you can see two requests here. Okay, let's go to this first request. So the first request for the first request, if you notice the URL is root URL slash books. So basically the URL for which we made the request. Okay. And if you notice the status code here is 302, which means found. So here, when the server received a request for this URL, root URL slash books, it sent a response. And in that response, the status code was 302. 302 means found. And if I scroll down in the response header, you will see a new header called location. And for that location, you will see the new URL to which we actually want to redirect the user when the user types root URL slash books. Okay, so browser sent a request to the server. Server sent back a response with the status code 302 and the new URL. So now the browser will automatically make a new request to this new URL. And the second request here is that request which the browser has made automatically. And here you will see the URL is root URL slash category slash books. And in here, since we have received a response, the status code is 200. And here you will not see any location header in the response header. Let's try to understand this with a diagram. So let's say this is our client. In our case, the client is the browser. Here we have our two action methods. The first action method called books with the route slash books. And the new action method, again, we are calling it books. But this time for this, the route is slash category slash books. So when a client is making a request to this first action method, to this URL, root URL slash books, this is going to be the URL. So when the request is made to this action method here, since we are using the redirect to action result, it is going to return a response. In that response, the status code will be either 301 or 302. 302 means found, 301 means moved permanently. And we are going to talk about these status codes later. And in there, we also have this location header, which is set with the new URL. So now the browser knows the new URL to which it has to make the request. 
So browser will automatically make a request to this new URL, to this new action method which we have defined here. And then from within this action method, we will return a new content result or any other type of result. But this is how the redirection works. When we have redirection, in case of redirection, there will be two request and responses. When we make the first request, in the response, we are going to receive a status code either 301 or 302. And there, the location header will be set with the new URL to which we want to redirect. And once that response is received by the client, in our case, the browser, the browser will again make a second request automatically to the new URL. And then from that URL, we will get the desired response. I hope this concept is clear. All right. Let me also put a breakpoint to this method. So this new action method which we have created. And let's go to the book controller. And there, I will also put the breakpoint to this action method. Let's run this in the debug mode. And here in the URL, let's say root URL slash books. So this time, first, the control will reach to the old URL, the old action method. From here, if I press F10, here we are calling a redirect to action. So from here, what will happen is a response will be sent to the client with the status code 301 or 302 and also with the new URL, which has been set for the location header. Okay. And then the browser will again make a request to the ASP.NET Co application to the new URL. So now if I press F10, you will notice that now the request has reached to this action method where the route is slash category slash books. So this is the second request which is hitting the server. And then from here, we are returning this content result. And we can see that response here in the browser. So in this case, the status code will be 302. Let me actually open the network tab again. And let's make a request to slash books. Okay. So here you can see the status code is 302, which means found. Now, what we can also do is, instead of returning the status code as 302, let's say we want to return the status code as 301. For that, instead of using this redirect to action method, I will again go ahead and I will create a new instance of redirect to action result. And since we want to return status code 301 in the response, here we can specify the fourth argument, which is of Boolean type and it is called as permanent and we can set it to true. By setting the permanent to true, we are telling that the page has been moved permanently. That's what 301 status code means. 301 status code means that a page has been moved permanently. So now if I go ahead and if I run this application, let's open network tab here and let's make a request to slash books. If I press enter, you will notice that now the status code is 301. Earlier it was 302. So let me put a comment here. So status code 301 means moved permanently. That means a page has been moved permanently to another URL. And 302 means found. And you can also say it means moved temporarily. Now, you might ask, what is the significance of the status code 301 and 302? Basically, in case of 301, since it is a permanent redirection, the browsers and the search engines remember the URL and they are cached by the browser and the search engines. So next time when someone searches for that page, instead of showing the old URL in the search result, it will show the new URL. That means we are telling the search engine that old URL can be abandoned and new URL can be used instead. On the other hand, this 302 means found, which means temporary redirection, and it may change back to original URL in the future. So in such cases, browsers and the search engines do not cache the new redirected URL. Okay, in our case, we have moved this URL, basically this slash books URL, permanently to slash category slash books. So in our case, we want permanent redirection. And that's why, in this case, we might want to return the status code as 301 by setting the permanent to true. 
here we can also use named parameters for example we can also set permanent to true like this here we are specifying the named parameter but in case we want the temporary redirection for example let's say we are adding a new category in our e-commerce application called home appliances but for the home appliances we currently do not have any products to display so what we want is whenever the user makes a request to slash category slash home appliances we want to redirect him to the home page of the e-commerce application and this should be a temporary redirection because in future we are going to add some home appliance products in our home appliance category okay so when we will add some home appliances products in the home appliances category then we might want to remove that redirection in that case we will want to redirect the user to the home appliances page right so in that case we might want to do temporary redirection and we might want to return 302 status code in the response so i hope the difference is clear now now here instead of creating a new instance of this redirect to action result and specifying the permanent to true we can use another method called redirect to action permanent okay and in there we don't need to specify this fourth parameter in that case it will automatically return 301 status code in the response but if we use redirect to action without using this permanent in that case it will return 302 status code in the response all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day